So, hi, my name is Thales. I've been working as a senior developer at iFood for almost a year now. And today I'll talk about how we are using Scylla at iFood. Uh, I'll talk about our pooling event systems, that is one of our systems using Scylla there. And I hope everyone can learn from what we have learned working uh, with Scylla. And I hope you enjoy. As I said, I'm Thales. Uh, I have been working at iFood for almost a year now as a senior backend developer. And I'm bringing you here today uh, how we are using Scylla at iFood. As I said, I'm Thales. Just to give you a bit of context, iFood is the largest uh, food delivery business in Brazil. Uh, it has over 80 or 90% market share. We are also present in Colombia and Mexico, and we are starting to expand across the globe. It has over 20 million orders a month and over uh, 100,000 uh, restaurants or merchants. That's something that I'm going to mix among the presentation because we just started working with supermarkets as well and other delivered types of business. We have over 12 million active monthly users, uh, and each order uh, produces among five, an average of five events in our database, which is why it amounts to over 100 million uh, events a month. And just to be, uh, give a bit of feeling uh, to the presentation, on the right you can see the, the app, where you go there and you place your order, and then the order goes to the web app used by the, the restaurants, where you, you can see the orders, you can uh, confirm them, dispatch them, and check them as well. Something that is really relevant here is how fast our food grew. It went from one million orders a month to 20 million in less than two years. Uh, all of our infrastructure is in AWS, which is why we are using SNS and SQS to deliver our events. And most of our services are done using Java, Node.js, uh, Docker, Kubernetes, and for database we use Postgres, uh, Dynamo, and we are starting to bring Scylla in as well. And I also need to introduce what my team does in all of this. Among other things, we are responsible for delivering, delivering those events to the, the restaurants. Uh, we do that, we have what we call the iFood platform, where the orders come from into a topic, and the connection team uh, process this stuff in a lot of ways and then we deliver them to directly to the iFood app or to integrations. And this is something really relevant here. It's why we have a pooling system. It's because uh, integrations are software houses, and not all software houses in Brazil are, dot, uh, are that tech savvy. So we actually need to have a pooling system or a HTTP uh, way to deliver them, because if you get something harder, it doesn't go well, for real. Like we have guys working with COBOL and Windows DOS and stuff like that. And so I'm talking about our pooling services. Uh, since we have an event-driven architecture, we have a topic with multiple delivering those events to multiple queues that are processed for uh, in each service. Uh, and we have a proxy service that whenever the app goes there, it decides in which service it's going to go on, so we can compare them. Uh, we have the, so the app asks for those events in a pooling way on the slash events route. And then when it gets those events, it sends an acknowledgement request with all the events IDs to, show, to tell uh, the service, okay, I, I've got these events, I don't want them anymore. Uh, this pooling happens every 30 seconds for each device, and the database needs to be invoked on each call. There are, these are some heavy queries of all known act events uh, for the device, and our term is to support half a million uh, connected merchants with one device each, at least. And I want to point out why we have this pooling system and not a pub sub. And the reason is that we do have a pool, uh, pub sub as well. But as I said, uh, integrations, need, uh, we need to, to provide them with an easy way to integrate with them. Because it's a strategic advantage for a food to actually have those software houses because we don't go after the restaurants. The restaurants uh, already have some kind of platform with the software house and the software house comes to us trying to integrate with us. And also because in Brazil there are a lot of places that don't have good internet, internet connection, so a persistent connection is not always the best approach. We have, uh, as I said, we have multiple systems. Uh, just give me some names. The proxy service that I showed before is called Kitchen Polling, 
and I'm going to talk about Gateway Core, which was the service over Postgres that is already dead. The connection order events, which use Apache Ignite, and it's the primary pooling system at iFood now. We have the connection pooling, which was done using Dynamo, which is Dyn, and the connection pooling that we changed to SivaDB. So to start with the Postgres one, uh, it's a simple uh, solution architecture where we had events indexed in one table and the acknowledgments in another one. And then when pooling, we just join those tables uh, with a query that would get all the events that haven't been acknowledged yet. Uh, as we got more and more orders, when it got to around 10 million orders a month, uh, this database was suffering. And we could just KO up, but we wanted to work on something better. Uh, as this was also a single point of failure, and this failed uh, sometimes last year. So in, uh, the guys started working on, uh, no, sorry, just to show you, uh, we had the events database uh, with the ID of the event and all the information that is retrieved on the pooling. And we also had the acknowledgments database that related in, uh, in device ID with the event ID. And then we just joined these two tables to get the pooling result. But then we started working on a solution using Apache Ignite because we had other services at iFood that used it. Uh, it works really well. Uh, the reading times are in the average of three milliseconds, but it has some problems. Uh, we had some bonus to pick fit on the past year because it's hard to monitor. The service, the service and the database are on the same machine. Uh, we need to save the events in another data table, in another database for when uh, scaling up the, those machines to fill the cache and also to recover from disaster, of course, because it's a cache. And it, for, to fill up this cache, if there is some kind of disaster, it takes us like uh, up to 20 minutes to get up. You can imagine like what is 20 minutes during dinner time. It's a lot of money. So that's why it had a, a fallback, which at first was the Postgres, but we already killed it, and we started working on the NoSQL approach. Uh, our main query is all the events that were not acted by the device. And, but we also need to take into account that orders and events, when they come from the platform, they, they do not belong to a device, they belong to a restaurant. So we need to know which devices uh, the restaurant has. And we also need to think about what to do with new devices. So we, had, we needed another table to save all those merchant events. So when we introduce a new device, we pull from this table and get all those events to the not act table to eventually be act. And we are only interested in the events from the last eight hours because this is the hot stuff. So we, uh, history and analysis is done in another part of our platform. Uh, with that, we arrived at this solution. And as you can see, we have the unacted device tables which I don't know if it's clear, but we index those events there. And whenever they are act, they are removed from this table. We have the restaurant events, which is used for when introducing a new device in the platform. In the table to relate uh, the restaurants and devices, uh, both ways. That's why it has a secondary index on the device ID to get all the restaurants for that device. So, uh, we first went off with Dynamo, but why Dynamo? Uh, first off, we needed a NoSQL database to try a NoSQL approach. Most of our infrastructure is in AWS, and mostly because it is a fully managed, fully managed, fully managed solution. Uh, and after implementing everything, we had some issues with it because uh, there, there's three ways to use Dynamo. You can just like leave a, a read and write units amount and if it goes up, uh, if it goes more than that, you get throttle. And if it goes less than that, you're paying more than what you're actually using. So what people usually use is the auto-scaling feature, but it was not scaling fast enough for us. Uh, because uh, as you can imagine, we don't have many orders in the morning or in the afternoon, but it's suddenly like when it gets to 11 a.m. or 7 p.m., it starts to go up like, like crazy. So we could. We could uh, just left a high minimum throughput so this would work, but this would be expensive. 
or we could manage it ourselves, which would defeat the purpose as a fully management solution. And with what uh, AWS released last year is the new on-demand mode. It is great. It, it's what we are using now, but it's expensive. And it was around this time that the Silo team got in contact with us so we could try new things. And that's when we start working on the version two of this system. And to migrate from Dynamo to Scylla, it was quite easy. Uh, we just had to change from the JSON query that Dynamo used to uh, CQL. But even though Dynamo uses a document-based strategy and Scylla uses uh, column-based, we could use the same uh, strategy, the same uh, modeling. And it should be even easier with the new project alternator that they released a few weeks ago. And how did it compare with Dynamo? We started with three C5 2x large machines, which is an uh, EC2 instance. And it could easily help the throughput that we have in Dynamo. And it was, this was nearly nine times database cost reduction. And it could still hold more throughput without any more machines. It went from 5K a month to 500 a month. It may sound little, but, sound little, but you can imagine the amount of services that we have at iFoods. Uh, it goes up like quite fast. And some learns that we had is that Scylla used TTL by column instead of DynamoDB expiration time by document, which is a bit more relevant for the next service using Scylla, because as you can see, there's service A. I'm going to show a service B. Uh, and this about the Scylla support, we found a bug when we were wor working on that. Finding bugs is not nice, but at the same time, when we opened the bug and uh, we provide everything that we could, in four days we had a release candidate for with that fix. It, it's really nice to know like both that is an open source and we can see what's happening and that there's someone there uh, working with us. But we also didn't like this modeling. It's something that we didn't like with Dynamo, we didn't like for Scylla, because we need to manage the restaurant device it's a pain to do that. And we need to manage the events for new devices as well. And it, be, it may be quite heavy to introduce a new device in the middle of the day. And that's why we tried the second approach using Scylla Collections. Uh, we know that there's an average of less than two devices per restaurant. And if you do the math, like uh, 20 million orders a month for uh, 100,000 merchants, and thinking about the five uh, events per order, we have less than 50 events per Mercia in on average, which is quite low, uh, 50 events a day per Mercia, which is quite low. So uh, that's why we tried this collection, this approach with just one table with all the events and a collection saying if that event has already been acknowledged by a device. And we had to filter on the, on the service if that event had been uh, acknowledged or not. In, of course, there is a clear drawback of reading times, but we, are, we were working on a NoSQL approach with Scylla and Dynamo because we were looking more about availability than reading times. So, and it was okay as a fallback system as well. And this approach had the advantage of being a lot less complex, and this events table can be used to populate the Ignite cache as well. So it's something that, uh, another thing that we can remove from our platform and simplify our solution. And this is the query that we are using to insert the events and the update the, with the acknowledgements that arrives. But there is an error with that that we learned the hard way. That, as I said, TTL works on each column by itself. Event ID is the partition, so it doesn't count, but the rest of the ID the payload, they each have their own TTL. So when adding the act devices, we actually need to add the TTL for that as well. So we need to select the TTL from the table before uh, and to use that to add the acknowledgement. Otherwise, it, it, it's something that happened for some time that the database was only growing larger uh, because the, this collection would never disappear. Uh, and the results of this database. The good, it was, uh, we used the same cluster, so it had the same cost reductions on the database. Since it had a time reduction to process those events from 80 milliseconds to three milliseconds, as, as he said, uh, 
This reduced the cost of the infrastructure as well in eight times. And the solution complexity made so we had less code to maintain in le less than 40% less code. The bad is, of course, the increasing read times and also collection of updates are CPU intensive. So as soon as we turned on the, the Lambda that would process the acknowledgments, we saw like a clear spike on the CPU usage of our cluster. And they, and they also generate tombstones, so uh, it also forced the garbage collection as well. And our final thoughts about using Scylla is that Scylla was cheaper when comparing with DynamoDB, but we, created, we had to create a cluster on AWS machines, which was easy. The guys, uh, I'm a developer, uh, the guys, the database managers, they said that it was quite easy, but you need to take into consideration the cost of maintaining a cluster or uh, using the new Scylla cloud. But I, I, don't ha I, I can't compare the cost of it. And at the same time, we didn't have, uh, for the past six months, we didn't have any issues with the Scylla cluster, which is extremely good because that's what we're looking for, high availability. And also check what you know about your domain and problem. It can be used to simplify the solution. Knowing all those numbers that I said led us to believe that using the Scylla collections would, uh, would reduce our costs, which is what, one of the things that we're trying here when comparing with Dynamo. Uh, also know the features of their database. We knew that collections were, uh, they're not as incentivized as most, in most cases because you need to know like you can't use with uh, a lot of items in those collections. Uh, updates are not cheap. And each one also incurs in a tombstone so it uh, affects the reading time as well, as well as the garbage collection. And we are still changing the GC Grace period to try to improve these garbage collection times. Uh, the Scylla secondary index are global, which uh, for our use case was great. It was exactly what we needed, but it just released as well the local secondary, the local secondary index. And you need to know when to use each. And for our case, it made sense to use the, the global one. And the next steps for our platform is that actually when we saw Scylla, something that we wanted to do is to remove this acknowledgement system, uh, not the pooling system, because as I said, we do need uh, a pooling solution. We still need to force Scylla to fail. I think this is the most uh, important thing that we have to do, because something that our database managers are worried about is like, oh, Scylla has been working for six months, but when it stops working, what do we do? How can we respond fast enough so we don't have that many losses? And we are also uh, still working on the MQTT PubSub solution because although the events delivery system uh, is working as expected, we are also using it to, uh, to tell if the restaurant is online or offline and it had some issues with it. And we, you return just one row at the end. Uh, so to build